Welcome to P3, Unit 1.2, Improper Fractions. So an improper fraction is when the degree of the numerator is either equal to or greater than the degree of the denominator. And when I'm talking about the degree, I'm talking about essentially the largest power. So, for example, something like x squared plus 5x plus 8 over x minus 2 we have this power here largest power on the top is a squared largest power on the bottom well just the power 1 so this is an improper fraction um, again you know if I had like x cubed plus x squared minus 9 over x cubed plus 8 the largest power on the bottom is cubed, the largest power on the top is cubed. So again, this is improper. Okay, so it's only when the powers are the other way around. Something like that. Well, this wouldn't be improper now, because you can see the largest power on the top is smaller than the largest power on the bottom. So it's all about that largest power on the top line, largest power on the bottom line. That's what you're comparing. So as I said, if it's the same or larger on the top line, the numerator, than the bottom line, the denominator, then it's an improper fraction. Now, there are two ways in which we can solve a problem with improper fractions. And this is an exam question here. Um, just simplified a little bit you can see on the left here the largest power is a cubed it's larger than what I've got on the bottom so it's improper so you can see it wants me to leave it in the form of a quadratic plus essentially its remainder okay so one method would be to use long division so setting that up Put my x plus 1 outside, x cubed plus 2x squared plus 3x minus 4. <coughs> uh, x goes into x cubed, so let's go divide in. So we've got x squared, x squared multiplied by x is x cubed plus x squared. And if you've watched my videos before, you know I like to just change my signs here and add. So x cubed. And x cubed is negative, so we've got 1x squared there. And I'm going to bring down my next term. So x goes into x squared, so that's going to leave me x. So that's x squared plus x. And again, I'm going to change the signs and I'm going to add 2x. Leaves me with the minus 4. So working this out, I get 2 on the top, 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 1 is 2. And again, change my signs and add 0, minus 4, minus 2 is minus 6. There is my remainder. So I'm just going to move this across a little bit, give myself a little bit more room. Um, and then I really should start with writing down what my fraction was up here. Or I could name it something first before I make this kind of final statement. And that's it. I could have also said, I suppose, x a equals 1 b equals 1, c equals 2, and d equals negative 6. Okay, and that's it done. That's the first method. Now the second method um, I'm going to show you here. All I need to do first is multiply through essentially by that x plus 1. That's what I'm doing, even though it is an equivalent, that's essentially what I am doing to set this up. So I'm going to put this in brackets, ax squared plus bx plus c, multiplied by that x plus 1, b 
plus d because the d over x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 1 is obviously just d. Now it's a case of just working out each of my values. So easiest place to start is let x equals minus 1 as that will make this bracket 0 therefore cancelling all this out and enable us to find d straight away. So we get minus 1 cubed plus 2 lots of minus 1 squared plus 3 lots of minus 1 minus 4 equals and then we're going to have that bracket it's going to be just 0 and we've got d. So we've got minus 1 plus 2 minus 3 minus 4 equals d. So d equals negative 6. Now, next easiest one is to let x equal 0. I'll just underline those to stand them out. Looking at the left hand side, <coughs> I'm going to have 0, 0 and 0. So I'm just going to have that minus 4. Looking at the right hand side in that first bracket, so I've got 0 plus 0 plus c. In the second bracket, so I've got 0 plus 1 and then plus d. So you get minus 4 equals c plus, now d is negative 6, so actually let's change that to a minus 6. Added my 6, so c is equal to 2. And there's my first two values. Just go on to a fresh page. So far I've worked out that d is minus 6 and c is 2. Okay, so next we want to look at finding out our a and b. So let's look at the coefficients of x cubed first. Terrible at spelling, I had to concentrate then. Um, I usually just shorthand it, but right in full. So coefficients of x cubed, so the number in front of the x cubed on the left hand side is just the number 1. Looking at how I get the x cubed on the right side, it's going to come from this ax squared multiplied by x. So that will give me ax cubed and the coefficient of ax cubed is just a. So there I've got a equals 1 and then we'll look at the coefficients of sorry x squared so look at this on the left hand side we've got 2x squared so the coefficient of 2x squared is just 2 and then look on the right hand side the coefficient so let's have a look ax squared times 1 is going to give me, give me 1x squared so that's ax squared right? And when I look at the second one, bx times x will be bx squared, so just b. Now I know a is 1, that means b equals 1. And there I've now got my a, b, c and d. So you can quite clearly see, you know, if I did write it back out, you can see what I've got. So I've got x squared plus x plus 2 minus 6 over x plus 1 as my answer there. Okay, which is the same as what we had the other method. Now, sometimes in the past, when it was, uh, before it was the, the P3 and it was part of the core, sometimes there were some questions that required specific methods but now it's you know you choose which method works best for you I would certainly suggest learning both methods as some questions are easier to do one way than other questions so you can adapt it as you need to here are three questions for you to try pause the video now and then I'll go through the answers afterwards. So I'll solve this one with 
wrong division as that's how it's already kind of set up to be solved. 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. So 2x cubed divided by x, so we've got 2x squared. And then if I multiply 2x cubed plus 6x squared, and I'm going to change the sign and add. Minus 3x squared there. Minus 4x. So we'll take that. We've got minus 3x. So we've got minus 3x squared. Minus 9x there. Change my signs and add. It's going to give me 5x. Plus 5 on the top, so it's 5x plus 15. Change my signs and add, and we get a negative 10 there. So you can see here, you know, we've got 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 minus 10 over x plus 3. So a equals 2, b equals negative 3, c equals 5, and d equals negative 10. By the way, this one's set up. I'll uh, just compare coefficients and substitute values in. Now, because of the x squared in this bracket, I'm not going to be able to make this bracket 0. Um, so I'll probably just start with substitute in x equals 0 in so that will give me 5 on the right and in this bracket I'm going to get just b in this bracket 2x squared will be 0 so it's just 2 the c will go and then I'm left with a d so I've actually got 5 equals 2b plus d so I can't do anything else with that one at the moment I'm going to leave that there, I'm just going to number it 1 for later. So let's have a look at the coefficients, that might have been a better place to start on this one. Just looking at the largest power coefficients x cubed, on the left side it is 8, and if I look at the right side the only way to do that is this ax times 2x squared. So a x times 2x squared would be 2ax cubed. So we've got 2a there. Therefore a has got to be 4. So there's my first answer there. Now let's have a little look at the coefficients of x squared. On the left hand side that's just 2. On the right hand side there's more than one way of making it. Is that? Let's have a look. No, not in this case. There's no x term there. So the only way we can make it the x squared is the b times the 2x squared there. So we've got b times 2x squared, so that's 2bx squared. So 2b. Therefore b equals 1. Now I know what b is, I can actually work out what this one is. So from 1 or substituting my b equals 1 into 1 so let's put sub b equals 1 into equation 1 we get 5 equals 2 lots of 1 plus d so d is going to equal 3 so now I've got 3 of my letters so to do the final one now, I could compare coefficients of x. So I'd have this one here, and I'd have this one here. Or I can substitute the number into everything. Okay, as we have d, and we have a, and we have b. So it doesn't really matter which method I use. I'm going to look at the coefficients of x. So on my left hand side there is no coefficients of x 
and then on my right hand side you can see I've got AX times 2 so that would be 2AX so just 2A and then I've got my C we know what A is we know A is 4 so 2A is 8 so C is going to end up being negative 8 now just to show you I could have substituted a number in if I say substitute x equals 1 in, squeeze it in up here, on the left hand side I'll have 8 plus 2 plus 5. On the right hand side, um, in the first bracket I'd have 4 plus 1, the second bracket I'd have 2 plus 2 plus c. D3. Squeeze that one in there. And then if I expand my brackets and simplify what's on the left, so on the left you can see I've got 15 and I've got 5 times 4, so that's 20. Oh, plus my 3, 23 plus C. So if I rearrange, C is going to be negative 8. So you can see I've got the same answer for C there. So there's two ways of doing it, it's whatever you're more comfortable with though, at the end. Okay, final question, let's go through this quite quickly. Uh, x to the power of 4 minus 1, it's very much like when you deal with difference of two squares here. So this is the same as an x squared minus 1 and an x squared plus 1. So that's what I've got for that expression there. Now, the x squared minus 1, we can obviously do, if again, difference of two squares, x plus 1, x minus 1. But we can't do anything with this x squared plus 1. So there it is now fully factorised. Now, part b means that we're looking at x to the 4 minus 1 over x plus 1. So this is x plus 1, x minus 1 x squared plus 1 over x plus 1. So I need to just cancel that. Okay. Um, now it might look like where do I go from here? But in actual fact I finished. If I look at it this makes my x cubed, this makes my x cubed, this is the same form as this. So my answer is this, x minus 1, x squared plus 1, where a equals 1, b equals negative 1, c equals 1, d equals 0, and e equals 1 and then I'm complete. Uh, thank you for watching, um, if you want to see more videos for the rest of the textbook or the rest of the course please just like and subscribe.